Today we are going over the Sounds for Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. This is iKatar. Let's dive in. <laughs> Guys, what is going on? iKatar here. Today we're talking about one of my favorite songs to recently resurge in the limelight. It is Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. Last year around November sometime, we had a whole thing on TikTok. Dreams made it to the charts again. It was a wild time during a COVID season and quite refreshing actually. And we're going to be going through how to get the guitar tones for this song. Now, if you guys are playing this song live or playing it in gigs, this will be really helpful to you guys to sculpt your sounds to match Lindsey Buckingham's parts on Dreams. Let's go for it. So first off, when doing the tones for Dreams, it's important to know what guitars they're using. Now, in the live version of Dreams, they're using a Les Paul-style guitar, and I'm going to be using this hollow body. In the actual recording that I did, I actually used a Les Paul-style guitar strictly. I used a Les Paul Studio, but for this recording, I'm going to use this PRS Zach Myers SE. It's my new flavor of the week, what can I say? And you need that because the tones are very, very warm. They're not super harsh sounding. They're kind of mellow. They kind of ebb and flow. And so even in the recording track, and you have these Les Paul mahogany backed inside guitars, using a Strat would, just wouldn't give it justice, although you can get away with a Stratocaster. I'm going to be trying to recreate it exactly like I heard it, and it's going to be with a Les Paul style guitar. Now, I'm going to be using the Kemper Rig Manager to give you guys a broad overview of my tones as well as the signal flow. Be aware, though, that if you have all the pedals on this signal chain, you can make the sounds of dreams. But to be honest, it gets a little expensive. And unless you use things like rotary and like tremolo all the time, um, it might not be worth it to you. So I would recommend a Helix FX or a Line 6 a thingamadooky or another multi FX processor to get those sounds you need. That way you're not breaking the bank trying to find these sounds. Now, one thing you'll be aware of when watching the Fleetwood Mac live video of Dreams is that he is definitely using a pedal to swell in and out. You'll notice that there is no pick attack on Dreams. It's very much super smooth. Um, and the point is you don't want to hear the general pick attack. Because of that, you really have to be careful about how you swell in, and I decided to mitigate all that pain by putting in an auto swell. You can kind of see that. First off, uh, we have a little compressor just for a little extra gain, try to round out some of the higher notes with the lower notes, but we have the auto swell. And the auto swell is really important. Um, auto swell will help keep me from being less consistent live and although auto swells are ineptly limited to their algorithm and how they swell in and out um that's way better than me trying to do with my with my foot um and so i highly recommend using an auto swell for this rig now listen as far as amps for this rig as long as it doesn't break up immediately you're going to be just fine i'm using a fender princeton for this um, with some reverb on it now um, you can use whatever you want you can use you know princeton like me or you can use a fender twin or a baseman but the point is we don't want this this signal chain to allow for a lot of gain or a lot of breakup because the song is supposed to be very smooth sounding so be aware of that when deciding on your amp rig but pretty much you can get away with any medium style size fender amplifier it'll work great for what you're using it for especially for this song now here were some of the things that kind of gets tricky with you know this whole dreams fleetwood mac tonality kind of a thing um it's all the extra stuff after the auto swell so we got auto swell out of the way that's easy but we have three things i want to talk about we have rotaries vintage choruses and tremolos so the rotary is a pretty big deal in this song the rotary is essentially pretending to be a rotary for a hammond b3 organ and it kind of gives this rotational kind of sound to it um that's really important for the song i wouldn't recommend um using without rotary you can get away with just tremolo but rotary is pretty crucial. And also the rotary can give you guys an idea of what it sounds like. Um, let me just deactivate all these things here. Here's what rotary sounds like just on its own. And that's the international motion for rotary, by the way. Just do this all day. And without it, it just kind of sounds dull. It just sounds like you're pumping up an auto swell. 
There's no definition there. There's nothing different. There's no body. But adding in the rotary really adds to the body of the sound. and gives it a fun effect in the meanwhile. The next effect that's going to be important to the sound is going to be our chorus. Um, chorus was used heavily during that time period. You won't find a song that chorus wasn't used. Chorus, similar to the rotary, in a way, adds a bit more body to the character of the sound. Here's just the chorus by itself. It's not, there's not a lot, okay? There's not a lot to go crazy on. The rotary's gonna help pick that nuance back up, but just enough chorus to taste. Once again, it'll add some body. No chorus. Just a little bit of chorus. And that with the rotary will give it a nice little sound. And then finally we have the tremolo. Tremolo was super important in this song. You have to have tremolo in this song for it to sound like the actual record. And of course, tremolo is just gonna add that um, fast repeating, kind of dipping in and out kind of sound. This will probably be the most important sound you build into your rig when making something for dreams. You can get away with just the tremolo. You can get away with chorus and tremolo, um, but you can't just do rotary and vintage chorus. Like, it won't work. So you have to have that tremolo in there. Thankfully, most amplifiers have tremolo attached to it if you're using a traditional Fender amplifier. But if you don't have a tremolo um, on your amp, use the one on your pedal board. It'll sound great. It's important for this sound to get that tremolo molo. Let's talk about the reverbs for a second. Reverb is really a two-taste thing. I'm not gonna get super specific into my reverb, but I've got the layout for you guys right here of what it looks like. Essentially, we've got a pre-delay of a, an eighth, a dotted eighth delay, um, pre-delay, and then decay time's about two seconds or so, and the room size is pretty big. So I like to have a little bit more room in the sounds of my reverb. That's gonna be mixed to taste, obviously. We're only hitting up about 40% mix rate on this one. But be aware that reverb will really help carry this sound a little bit further. And I put that at the end of my signal chain because I want all of these three effects going into the reverb to be affected by the reverb, okay? So be aware of that when you're doing it and have a lot of fun building this rig. But that's not the end. We need to talk about how you end up playing this song technique-wise. I'm not going to go over parts right now, but I do want to talk about a little bit about how I went about playing this song because you're really privy to how your auto swell works. So when going about playing this song, using a light hand is really key in getting the full sounds you want with an, a typical auto swell. If you don't have an auto swell, you're doing it all by hand, it's no problem, but just know we're not trying to hear this pick attack sound. We want the swell part only. So you're really dependent upon how your auto swell works and you have to really understand the intricacies of how your auto swell is going to function if you want to get the most out of this sound. Now, if you're playing live, it's not a big deal if sometimes you get a pick attack in there, but just be aware that if you're doing a recording, it's gonna be real tricky to kind of navigate that. And how I ended up doing it was, I did a lot more hammer-ons and a lot more slides than I thought I would. Now, I did have to skip some strings, that's part of the song, but in the end, I really tried to make sure that I wasn't picking every note. I was using my hands and using my hammer-ons and pull-offs to really add to that smooth sound. And that, my friends, is a quick overview of how to get the guitar sounds from Dreams. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. And if you guys have not seen our instrumental cover of Dreams, be sure to check it out in the description below. It was a lot of fun, some cool guys made some great sounds with me on that song, and we worked really hard. So check it out down below. And once again, we'll see you guys next time on iGuitar.